So if you guys have kept up with gaming news and graphic technology, you would know that AMD cards have been really giving Nvidia the run for their money. I mean, in Quantum Break, in Killer Instinct, and in Far Cry Primal, these three DirectX 12 games, AMD cards have been handily beating their counterpart and almost tying with their next tier card. The 390X is tying with the 980 Ti and that should not be happening when you compare the specs and the pricing of each of those cards. So the question is, why is that happening? What makes AMD cards so special that they're beating their NVIDIA counterparts? and the card above them. I will say before you guys watch this video, I recommend you guys at least skim through Adore TV's Pascal and Polaris video series. It's a three part series and each uh, video is about 20 minutes long, 15 to 20 minutes long, but I will say that this will make a lot more sense if you go check out that video first. But other than that, let's start with the analysis. One of the main reasons why AMD cards are beating NVIDIA cards is because of DirectX 12's new utilization of asynchronous computing. Well, what is asynchronous computing? Well, to simplify things, think of it as multi-threading on graphics cards, but instead of cores and threads, you have these lanes called queues. More queues mean more done in less time. Basically, a graphics card is composed of three queues, each with different tasks. The first one is the graphics queue, which takes care of visuals. Shadows, bitmaps, and UIs all use the graphics queue. Secondly, we have the compute queue. Physics, ambient occlusion, and anti-aliasing all rely on this. Also, OpenCL and CUDA use this for rendering. And lastly, we have the copy queue, which updates data. With regular synchronous computing, the graphics card must process through each of these queues independent of one another. It cannot run any three of these simultaneously in any order or order combination. DirectX 12 thrives on synchronous computing and so do NVIDIA graphics cards to a certain extent. For comparison, Maxwell, the 900 series, has one graphics queue and 31 pure computation queues. GCN 1.1 and above has one graphics queue and eight pure computation queues. They're also called ACEs, which is short for Asynchronous Computation Engines. But the issue with the Maxwell series is their lack of engines. The 900 series only have one engine that can run either graphics in parallel or computation in parallel, but not both. Hence, it is not inherently asynchronous. On the other hand, GCN cards have nine engines, eight of which run purely computation, while the command processor can run either compute or graphics. Because of the division between the queues and the extra engines, AMD cards post-2011 can run up to eight lanes of pure computing, totaling to 64, and either graphics or compute on the other lane, simultaneously. Because of this, more work is done in less time. DirectX 12, Vulkan, and Mantle all utilize asynchronous computing, while DirectX 11 does not. This basically allows the graphics card and the CPUs to read each other's information quicker, reducing CPU overhead, increasing graphical processing speed, and thus giving you that extra boost in performance. So if all of that kind of mind boggled you a bit, think of it this way. You have three different streets, each representing the three different queues, and cars in the streets, which represent information being passed through the GPU. With synchronous computing, all the cars from the first street must pass and turn off the street before the cars from the second street can begin their journey. Not only does this prevent graphical multitasking, but it also creates a small lag between the turning of the cars of the first street and the starting of the cars in the second street. With asynchronous computing, you are not limited to a street, but instead you have a multi-lane highway. Cars are continuously moving through the highway, and they can enter and exit as soon as they see an opening in the lane. This gets rid of that small lag that you have with synchronous computing, and it also allows you to multitask with the GPU. So you can see how this definitely speeds up the graphic processing behind video and video games. So I hope you guys liked this mini analysis. I tried to simplify things just so this can appeal to 
most people watching the video. If you deem this useful, don't be afraid to share this video with anybody that's questioning why AMD is at the top of their game right now in the graphics department. Of course, this is a good thing because it motivates NVIDIA to try something new and work smarter and not harder. And of course, if they get motivated, then AMD gets motivated and it's just a whole bunch of motivation for everybody, which is great for us consumers because it lowers prices and increases product. But anyway, I blabber and I tend to digress a lot, but if you guys like this video, give it a like, and if you loved it, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys later on my next video. Peace out. Peace out.